let's move on to our final segment, which is uh, basically just about uh, what we think uh, Steam it needs now. And um, I just want to bring in a couple things from <clears throat> a post from a few days ago by at Steam it blog about uh, the Steam 0.14. Dot zero uh, release candidate and some new features it's got there. Have you guys seen the savings account feature? Daddy, what savings? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's a retirement. I don't know what that is. Daddy's little I, girls, girls don't have to worry person. about that. No, <laughs> no, this, this is man no, stuff. No, pe young people don't have to worry about that. Like, uh, does anybody else have savings? I don't know. <laughs> I got <laughs> savings. I'm not, not in the United States. You have, yeah, I get, you have I, I, got accounts. I got investments into decentralized systems. That's exactly. My I think my Steam wallet is worth more than any of my other financial yeah. systems. I don't know. You've got a really, really nice looking uh, bookshelf that looks like it could be liquidated. You want to buy the skull? <laughs> buy the skull? <laughs> $500. Like $500 Steam dollars. Oh. <laughs> Banking <laughs> off of that. Boom. So this savings account idea is pretty neat. It says, uh, and I'm quoting, all transfers out of savings accounts. And these are savings accounts, you know, that are, looks like it's going to be set up inside your uh, Steam wallet that you'll be able to access on steamit.com. All transfers out of these accounts have a 72-hour delay during which the sender can notice, uh, recover their account, and cancel the transfer in case, you know, somebody uh, hacked you. I mean, that, that's nice. That's another, you know, anti-hacking protection besides the steam power, you know, because when you put your steam into steam power, it's very hard to get it out. And that, that's a de facto uh, protection against hacking, you know, and this is another one. And I think it's pretty, pretty excellent because right now, you know, Bitcoin is just recovering, barely recovering from its last 100,000 Bitcoin theft, you know. And uh, I think theft, you know, the whole theft issue has been a big threat to the adoption of Bitcoin. Uh, which is really blows my mind because of the sheer fact that literally hundreds of, hundreds of times the value of theft occurs with fiat currency and with the current banking system. And yet that's not, that's not relevant. Only the couple, you know, only the couple hundred or only the couple tens of millions is, is relevant compared to the actual billions and like, trillions of fucking dollars in theft that actually occurs in our current system. Yep. Yeah. Well, and you know, all nice I have to do, convenient. All I have to do, Stephen, is call up my bank and they, they give me the money back, you know, that was stolen. And, uh, you know, when the price of gas goes up and the, uh, the quality of the uh, corn oil, you know, and the uh, bread, when I find that they're stuffing, uh, you know, sawdust into my, my bread, that, that's greedy corporations. It's got nothing to do with government, man. Uh, a lot of you know, there's a there's that there's that middle ground where uh, I guess I got ex where I was raised uh, with a family of a business owner who you know small business owner made a decent amount um, and got to see that middle ground of okay so small business big corporations were small businesses at one point uh, at what point does the small business owner become a greedy corporation you know it. Upon signing of the corporate uh, <laughs> charter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, there's a, there's a whole, like, philosophy behind that. Of I, I like to muddy the waters there. Um, just get people thinking, eh, maybe corporations aren't inherently evil, but I do think that they focus on the wrong thing, which makes them perceived as evil. But originally, they're just a group of people with an idea, and uh, that was the thing with the small business owner, like, perspective I have is, uh, I guess... Uh, some people, the people that really think everybody's inherently evil are the people that have never really tried to accomplish anything big. Mm. You got it. Well, you know, the thing, the thing is, you know, people, I think you ask your regular man on the street and they'll say, well, there's a big difference between small business and big corporations. And I think he's right. And I think that that difference can be identified. Your regular small business, your pizza shop, your delivery company, your medical transcription, whatever the small business is, it's not really getting any benefit from, uh, you know, the corporate welfare and special corporate privileges and the corporate uh, charter of limited liability that governments give it. But these big corporations, they benefit hugely from all this 
his corporate welfare and with their uh, enormous profits that they get from these special privileges, they then pay it back into the political system and buy uh, favors from, uh, you know, everybody else's elected representatives. You know, I think that that's really the big difference in why, you know, it, it makes sense to separate the small business from the big corporation. I, I, I agree. Um, but at what point? Uh, as a small business owner, it is in your best interest to carry influence and you want to be as influential as possible. At some point in time, you're going to, if you want to allow your influence to stretch, you're going to have to ride somebody else's kind of like what we covered earlier or we were talking about earlier. So, you know, I, at what point is it selling your soul versus making a, not even making a deal with the devil, just, you know, you're, you got to you got to give a little to get a little and you want to give a lot to get a lot. Um, and so I guess I, I don't necessarily see those as inherently evil again, but I do, um, I do think the fucking political system mixed with the corporate system is completely rigged. I, I totally recognize that, but is that not in the benefits of the, why wouldn't you want that fucking sweet deal? If you can get that deal, why the f- if you're jealous of it from other people having it, don't act like you wouldn't fucking take it for yourself. Not necessarily you. Well, George. some some of us have ethics, you know. Some, some but, people do, but uh, some his- people lack the ability to tap into that. I mean, there are there, there are systems go. that Most. that reward um, certain people who are ingrained in our in our culture and economic systems. There, there's an inherent unfairness. Yeah, that, you know, I think that's what separates the small business from the corporation is if you can benefit from these, you can take advantage of things. Well, life is it fair? Life but is we can make it more fair. How? Make it more fair. Uh, people treat prettier people better than they treat ugly people. Inherently, there is already a, a system of imbalance. Um, and you can't even, that's, that's without involving money. They like, people like pretty people. They are repulsed by ugly people. Pretty people have an advantage. Is that going to, how do you create a system that, that, that balances that? I mean, I, maybe. Easy. Everybody wears a bag over their head. <laughs> <laughs> I would have taken less long, a lot less longer to get ready for this podcast if I just put a bag over my head. Oh, oh, stop. Oh, that's stop. You were, no, no, you yeah, graced us. With drunk, your- you guys saw my drunk makeup tutorial, right? No. Yeah, I watched that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you know, life is not about fairness. It's about fucking dealing with your disadvantage that you've been naturally given. Like, shit, I've got ADHD. Surprised anybody hadn't fucking figured that out for themselves. Um, and yet, uh, you know, I've, I've done my best to use that as a strength. Um, other, because I, I didn't get any special uh, privilege more than the white male privilege. I was a fucking disruption in school and sent to the principals every other week, if not every week. You know, I, 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 I had my own struggles to deal with that some people don't ever have to worry about. Um, so it's all about dealing with your own personal uh, advantages and disadvantages. And I don't think anybody's at a, I, I think there's inherent advantages, but I think that some people focus on those disadvantages and pity themselves, you know? Anybody mm. else? Anybody? Renee, you want to get the, uh, the uh, last word in on this particular topic? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there, so there's another part of this release candidate announcement <clears throat> about the target votes uh, changing from 40 to 5. Now, this, this whole voting thing has me spinning because I keep seeing different information everywhere. But he, here's what it says. It says, we're changing the target number of votes per day from 40 to five, big change, so that, the, so that more people keep their voting power below 100%. This, the purpose of this change is to rebalance power toward normal users and away from bots. You can still vote as often as you like. This change merely impacts the speed at which voting power is consumed. I don't know. I, I don't know. It seems like they're they, like, I, the, just realizing the curation uh, didn't pay that much. And then realizing like you could only vote between 20 and 27 times per day 
you know, before like your votes started, the value of your votes started declining. And then we have whales not voting. And now it seems like this is eating away at the power of votes even more. I don't understand it. Well, you can adjust your, your vote power now. So I've heard people say that, well, if you, if you reduce your, the power of each vote to, I think it was 12%, don't quote me on that, that it kind of, uh, that will restore the balance of what you're losing from t- taking 40 votes and turning it into five votes. Uh, that makes sense. So it has less power. Uh, you know, and think of if you just voted five times per day, how much power your vote would have. That's pretty cool that you could- 2.2 cents. Because I don't vote every day. Uh, sometimes there's days where I'm like out doing stuff. I don't mm. have a life. I, I vote every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm on chat a lot. <laughs> George, where's your voting power? I see you posting all the time. You're, you're, pretty, you're pretty frequent. You're, a great, you're one of the more frequent content creators. You got a nice you long think? list. I think so, yeah. I got a nice long list from you, but then again, I caught you fairly early in my steam it, uh, my steam it experience. So, you know, I guess I got a little, I got a little side seat. Is he your daddy? Is he your sugar daddy? He's my steam and sugar daddy. No, I just I got, I got some uh, good ideas. First content creator on steam it that I'm like, oh shit, I didn't even know. And I uh, got a lot of people like that. You know, that's what's cool about steam it. But, uh, you know, I, I've also seen that I've seen, I've noticed a certain frequency and mm. you're a little more frequent than some others. Well, I'm, I, I, uh, I've been, I, I, I fancy myself a writer and I have things to say. I have strong opinions, you know, and uh, trying to make it as a science fiction author. So, yeah, it's, it's the main focus of my day, writing is, you know. So, if I can put, uh, or other, you know, other content. So, if I can put some of it on uh, Steam, uh, Steam it and make some money, that, that's, a, that's a huge win for me. So how much is it like, a, I just want to know how much for you has been like original content like that you didn't put, that you had, that you didn't have before, Steven? Well, uh, the Lando series, that, which is most of my, the fiction, it might even be all of the fiction that I've posted so far. I wrote that in 2014. And whoa. So uh, yeah, I just posted episodes 100 through 104 of Lando Cruz and the Coup Conspiracy, a dystopian thriller novel, and it's up to $70. I don't know. That's pretty weird because last week I was like, oh my gosh, nobody's voting for my stuff. What did I do wrong? Yeah, that's, a- so that's, so that's not, I mean, that's, that's my content, you know, uh, I, it's, I'm the creator. It hasn't, I haven't sold more than a hundred copies of it, I don't think, but I did create that before. But for example, the, um, the the raw liberty videos that i'm making uh i have the, the only ones that i've posted of those are are they're completely fresh material uh made they're inspired really by steam it because i'd stopped making it before because i was it just wasn't sustainable for me and my positos uh posts are all uh, original uh i i actually owned positos.com eight years ago and i tried to make a go of it and didn't really work out but all of the Positos content that I've posted here is completely fresh and new, you know? Um, so it's the systems building content creators and right. we're, we're allowed to express our creativity in ways that we'd struggled before and not saw rewards from. So yeah, um, <laughs> that it's working for you. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. It's, uh, it sounds like us, like there's, I I've noticed now there's so many people out there who just have written, 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 and you know, they're, probably gonna most people were just gonna die without people reading their works at all and uh now they've made it very nice and, and heck it's even online and still nobody's read it that's apparently a, a big thing it's uh, those those writers are not necessarily uh internet marketers and they also don't have the budget for, to pay for internet marketing um you know, there's a whole, there's a whole barrier of entry there. Um, my dad as well had like, you know, 19 or no, he had like 16 chapters, um, written for a, a book that he started uh, putting on steam. It called just in time. Um, you know, that's something that, uh, he, he wasn't making, he, it was just sitting on his computer doing nothing. I told him about steam and I was like, dude, 
post a chapter at a time. That's a, that's a thing. And, you know, now he's every once in a while, he'll catch a Bernie Sanders vote. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I get a text from him saying, I got a Bernie. I caught a Bernie. Um, and, you know, that's, that's something that it's exciting to see um, people who d- thought that they weren't going to get a, a damn thing for writing it to suddenly get that reward. It's, it's rewarding for me to see other people that I've exposed the system to feel that same type of reward that I got when I first, you know, started Steam It. And I'm sure it's the same thing for you guys too, right? Definitely. Definitely. So the, the last piece of content I wanted to bring up was uh, this Steam Squad uh, by at Steam Squad. And it's um, basically it's like a group upvoting thing. So people join the group and then they all are supposed to upvote each other's posts. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about these kinds of things. What, what, what do you guys think? Inevitable. <laughs> I'm kind of hand. I, I, keep my hands off of that i've had invitations to join actually i'm in the the robin hood whale um chat channel but i have not i hope that they don't feature any of my content i would rather do it myself because of the inherent flaws with the whole featured author thing um i have some big questions about that so what are the inherent flaws uh, that's like that's on a whole other podcast, <laughs> darling. I don't think you want to get into that. <laughs> just throw, but, just throw me something. I want to know. Just, a little flow. But just, just for me, I've gotten invited to join the uh, what is it? What was it called? Steam Squad. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I don't think that's for me. But because I, I value original content, and I'm not going to just automatically vote for somebody because you're in my my club. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm skeptical. You gotta, of it. What if you, well, I mean, if it's a special invite club, then you should consider that they've already done a little vetting and that they do have a quality threshold that maybe they're looking for that you fulfill. Um, so I, it's a, I, I agree, though. It is kind of. You're, you're, I'd rather get by on my own merits and, you know, my occasional Bernie Sanders vote. <laughs> <laughs> there is no such thing as your own merits. Not, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about everybody because everything is tribalistic. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you have your own merit. I know. I mean, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that you have your own merits, but I'm, I, I didn't mean it to be a personal attack on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I need more, I need more drama for my post. I need like a $900 post here. have no merit. And he said it in a rude voice. <laughs> but like everything is so tribal because I go like um, well, feeds, I think feeds made us much more insular unless mm. you're going out and seeking out diversity. It's so easy to just look at your feed and just hit that upvote. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing. Any, any activity that turns into an autonomous act that you're not thinking about is not good. <laughs> mm. Even yeah. if it benefits me somehow, uh, it's not, it's still not good. <laughs> Look at those values <laughs> displayed right there. Moral fiber, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's just my disclaimer that I'm not going to always vote for your content, guys. Not, <laughs> don't think that I hate you. I just, I'm not going to, especially if I only got five votes a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think this has been a really good episode. We've had some great conversations. I hope uh, the listeners have enjoyed it. Uh, is there anything that you guys would like to add before we sign off? I think I got in all my uh, shout outs in as natural of a way as possible. Uh, oh, I do want to say the Just In Time novel is at Justifin. That's the author. That's my father. Just throwing that one out there. Dead. And, Thanks, Dad. Uh, I would like to add that during this podcast, my sister has given birth to my first niece. Wow! So, I know that it's like I was like I tried to get her to live stream the whole thing on Steam, but she was like, "Nah, that's okay." So um, <laughs> yeah, I, kind I of think, don't want to have a camera point <laughs> out there. Dead. First I've been getting text messages the whole time uh, of updating me on the progress, but so apparently I have a niece now. During hey. The- hey. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> now you get that's to spoil awesome. the shit out of her. Uh, now they're in Ohio, so I'll get to see them like once every two years. That's what Amazon time. is for. She's just gonna <laughs> randomly get, <laughs> gonna be like, "Holy shit! Why do these drones keep dropping off these awesome things?" And sure, I better reserve her Steam it username right now. So in like twelve years, when she's on Steam it, it'll have accrued in value and stuff. So. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, look at that <laughs> Definitely. Things at work. <laughs> 
All right. Well, uh, thanks everybody for listening. This has been the Steam Smart Podcast. You can uh, find us at uh, steamit.chat on the Steam Smart Podcast channel. And please join us for a special episode this Thursday, September 8th, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, Letting Off Steam. Uh, Renee is going to be joining us for that as well. And we want you to join us too. Up to 50 people can join us on the video chat. We'll record the whole thing. We'll put it up as a uh, podcast episode. It's your chance to let off some steam. All right. Thanks, guys.